According to 50s actress Jane Russell, when love goes wrong, nothing goes right. According to 50s novelist Patricia Highsmith, when love goes wrong, murder happens. At least, that's the case in The Talented Miss Ripley, a novel written by Highsmith in 1955, which Anthony Minghella adapted into a film 40 years later. 1999's The Talented Mr. Ripley follows Tom Ripley, Matt Damon, a nefarious young man who is tasked with bringing wealthy and attractive Dickie Greenleaf, Jude Law, home to New York from Italy, but gets distracted along the way. To analyze The Talented Mr. Ripley using reader response criticism, I must take what I bring to the film into consideration. I am of course bringing my experiences in my 18 years of life as a middle class white woman, but more importantly, I bring encyclopedic knowledge of the 2015 film Carol. Why is this relevant? Well, Carol is an adaptation of the romance novel The Price of Salt, which, like Ripley, was written by Patricia Highsmith in the 50s. I rewatched Ripley with a comparative lens, drawing connections between the 1999 crime drama and my favorite film. I determined that because of their similar themes, characters, and plot points, the talented Mr. Ripley is just a gender-swapped version of Carol. Sixteen years after Aussie actress Kate Blanchett appeared in the talented Mr. Ripley as airhead socialite Meredith Logue, she laid down one of the most iconic performances in film history as the fabulous Carol aired. Invite me round. The film Carol follows Therese Velvet, played by Rooney Mara, a department store clerk who falls in love with the titular Carol, a wealthy mother of one in the midst of a custody battle with her ex-husband Harge. As a Cape Blanchett enthusiast, her presence in both of these films was the reason I initially drew a comparison between Ripley and Carol. The parallels between the films don't stop at Cape Blanchett's name in the cast. Carol and the talented Mr. Ripley share similar themes despite their differing genres. The Price of Salt is the singular romance novel in Patricia Highsmith's oeuvre of mostly psychological thrillers. But despite being a romance, The Price of Salt's film adaptation hits on various psychological thriller themes. Carol hides a gun in her suitcase, and nothing screams thriller more than a revolver with an ivory handle. Carol's romantic love for Therese is treated as a crime when it's used against her in her custody battle, and the buildup of Carol and Therese's romantic relationship is certainly suspenseful for the invested watcher. Smell that. While Ripley checks all the boxes of a classic psychological thriller, it also checks many romance genre boxes. Tom's obsession with Dickie is just a romantic one taken to an extreme. Ripley definitely hits on the suspenseful themes of classic romance novels, just in a slightly more serial killer way. If the talented Miss Ripley truly is a gender-swapped Carol, the characters in both films must match up. And indeed, they do. Carol's protagonist is Therese, a lower middle-class store clerk in love with a woman. Her counterpart in Ripley is Tom, because although he's a little more psychopathic than Therese, Ripley is also in love with a person of the same sex, and doesn't have a lot of money to his name. Carol's counterpart is Dickie. They are both very wealthy, attractive, and are the objects of affection of the protagonists. Aside from their practically identical names, Carol's ex-husband Harge and Ripley's Marge are both the long-term heterosexual partners of the rich love interests. Parallels can certainly be drawn from Meredith, Blanchett's character in Ripley, to Richard, Therese's boyfriend in Carol. They both get broken up with by the protagonist, and are mostly inconsequential to the plot. But Blanchett is a scene stealer, as usual. Freddie and Ripley, a friend of Dickie's who suspects something is off about Tom, equates to Abby, Carol's ex-lover and best friend. Both are quietly jealous of the protagonists, but ultimately care most about the interests of Dickie and Carol. Ripley and Carol demonstrate the effects of repressing versus accepting one's true identity. Ripley shows the negative effects of repression in two ways. More obviously, through the main storyline of Tom literally committing identity theft, it's me. but also subtly, by implying that being shut down by a same-sex crush was the trigger for Tom's life as a career criminal. 
Repression turns Tom violent, while acceptance, to quote Carol, makes Therese... She's suddenly blossomed. After Therese comes home from her eventful road trip with Carol, she undergoes a physical and psychological transformation for the better. The newly minted lesbian bids a final farewell to her ex-boyfriend, finds the courage to apply for her dream job, and begins dressing classier. Though Ripley's cunning cons are nothing to be scoffed at, his clever yet constant identity shifting between Tom and Dickie represents unresolved inner turmoil at not being able to openly be who he truly is, a friend of Dorothy. In The Talented Mr. Ripley, repression of his sexuality leads the male protagonist down a self-destructive career path. In Carol, realization and acceptance of her sexuality leads the female protagonist to evolve into her better self. To the uncultured eye, Carol Wise, it would appear that these films have nothing in common, aside from Blanchett and Highsmith. However, as a trained expert in queer subtext and six degrees of Kate Blanchett, my mind is wired to make extraneous connections between two things that don't seem to fit. Anthony Minghella might not have intentionally mirrored themes and characters from The Price of Salt while directing the talented Mr. Ripley, but the parallels are certainly there for those with encyclopedic knowledge of Carol, like myself, to uncover. <laughs>